Okay, uh, a couple days ago or so I made a video talking about why you shouldn't buy an off-the-shelf survival kit. I'm now going to critique the Best Glide ASE Wilderness Survival Kit that is $330. This, at that price point, I would expect to not have to add anything to this kit. But this is the nature of off-the-shelf kits. And this is from a company that I actually like and would recommend. So this, this is as good as it gets, and you're going to see the problem with an off-the-shelf kit in this stuff that I have to say. That's kind of the point of this video. So we're, we're critiquing this thing and saying, if you did buy this, what would you have to do to it to make it something that I would actually want to use? Well, right off the bat, it's $330, which is at a price point where it should have most of the things that you would need in it, in my opinion, but you should probably also expect to have to add tools, right? Like, no one building a $300 kit is going to buy an $80 Leatherman for it. You know, no one's going to buy a $100 plus survival knife to put in it. However, uh, neither of those things are in the kit to any level. The The only multi-tool in the kit is a, a knife called the Victorinox Recruit, which I love Victorinox, but this would be a good knife for a mini kit, maybe. Like, if you're going to do an Altoids 10 survival kit, this knife kind of makes sense. It's pretty small. It's an 84 millimeter version of their standard soldier knife. It has the standard uh, two blades and tools on it that are a can opener, bottle opener, and screwdrivers. That's it. That's a big failing in this kit in my mind, as is there is absolutely no fixed blade whatsoever. Now, would I expect the best fixed blade in the world to be in the bag? No, but at $330, I would expect it to come with a Mora knife, which that website, Best Glide, sells on their website for $14. This is a kit that's meant to go in a bush plane in Alaska to survive after some sort of plane crash or to go in the back of a car or something like that. It's like a duffel bag full of shit. Uh, the video that I watched that inspired this is a kit bashed survival video that is the $300 plus wilderness survival kit from Best Glide ASE. And he makes some additions at the end that pretty much go along with everything that I'm going to tell you in this video. But just cutting tools alone, that's a big miss to me. Like, I would rather have the cheapest fucking no-name multi-tool that is a full-size multi-tool and has real tools on it, rather than have the, the Victorinox with no tools. I would rather have a Victorinox with tools on it than a cheap no-name multi-tool. But, like, I know there's concessions to be made here. Or don't put it in there at all and have a big fucking sign on the package when you get it that says, Hey, we didn't put a multi-tool in this, but it's highly recommended that you add it to the kit before use. Something. Adding a Swiss Army knife and just going like, Yeah, no, that's fine and making it a Swiss Army knife that doesn't even have a wood saw on it, which it just blows my mind. Which brings us to the next topic, is that there's no wood processing tools in this kit whatsoever. I think they have a wire saw, which is pretty much useless. Like, I have one in my small survival kit because I got it for free, and you could use it for something in theory, and why not have it if it's free and it's that small and light? But to have it as your only saw or axe or any kind of a wood processing tool at all in this kit is insanity. Again, at $330, I think Fiskars makes a saw that they sell at Lowe's for like 10, 12 bucks. You would be better off with that thing in that pack than that wire saw by a hell of a lot. There's a lot better saws. You could go get a Baco Laplander. You could go get a Silky saw. Those are kind of more expensive. And if they want to go, hey, there's a big sticker on the outside of this pack that says go buy a saw to put in here. 
Cool, but that's not what they do. They think you're just fine with the wire saw. That also blew my mind. The other thing that blew my mind about this kit is that for $330, it doesn't come with a single steel container in it. There's no canteen, no canteen cup, no bush pot, no, no nothing. And containers, in my mind, are important. They put a water bag in there, and there's some Eloxac bags that they pack a lot of their kit items in. And you could put water in all of those things, but you can't really boil water in any of those things. <clears throat> they don't give you that much water purification stuff. Like, I think there's one pack of some Aquamira drops in there, and that'll last you quite a while. That and the water bag are pretty sufficient for probably a week or two. But this, again, is for a bush plane in Alaska. You know, for my money, I would rather have something better. And it, you know, honestly, the water bag they chose is probably $20. I didn't look up the price of it, but it, it's probably a pretty good priced water bag. The Aquamira drops are pretty pricey, too. And... For my money, I would rather have water purification tablets. And as far as the water containers go, what I would do if I were them is go buy a two quart stainless steel bush pot. Uh, when I Googled one, the only one that I could find that really looked like something that I would buy was from Dave Canterbury's site. It's just self-reliance outfitters or something like that. And on his site, it was like 30 bucks. On another site that was like tacticalwholesalesomething.com, it was 18 bucks. I would assume that Best Glide could probably get a better price than either of those places buying that particular pot. Or something similar. Made in China, even. Like, it doesn't fucking matter. It's a steel pot. So, how much did that, did that water bag and the water... Uh, purification drops cost how much do all those Aloxac bags cost and why are you wasting money on the kit on that shit over a USGI plastic canteen in some sort of cheapo cover that has a lanyard on it to do crossbody carry or even just a belt loop like you could get they make better canteens than that. I'm not advocating you use that canteen, but if they're really going for a price point here, I'd like to have that water bag. That's a nice to have thing. Would I have that over a canteen and a steel bush pot? No. Why? You can't boil in it. It's just a big deal. And when it comes to walking anywhere with that water you're not going to use the water bag like it has a handle on it I don't know if you've ever tried to carry I think it was a two gallon bag with a plastic handle that's going to suck something fierce and in a survival situation you're probably not supposed to move in the first place that's probably where their head is at but like what if you don't have a choice what if you are compelled to move and this is why I would have the water bag in the kit for sure if the money would allow it, but I would have a, some sort of plastic or steel canteen in a some sort of a cover that allowed it to be carried easily in there for sure. And this could be done cheaply, very cheaply. The the stainless steel bush pot from the tactical wholesale place was eighteen dollars. Assuming that they could get whatever deal those people are getting to sell that thing, it's probably more like $15 or something. You could 100% put one of those in this kit. And it is a two-quart stainless steel uh, pot with a bale on it that you could hang over a fire. It's pretty much perfect for any survival boiling type scenario. And I think they're banking on the fact that you have enough water purification drops and enough plastic containers that you'll never have to do that. But that's a pretty big gamble and not one that I personally would be willing to take. And even Kit Bash Survival, who was making the video, when he made his additions at the end, he added two of those little 
uh, stainless steel canteen cups that are for like a Nalgene bottle. I wouldn't do that either. Those are kind of small. Like the thing that I have right now that I would throw in that kit is a MSR Alpine pot that's about two quarts that I think is like 15 or 20 bucks. It's not the best thing. The best thing would be the bush pot with the bale on it, but anything in that line is better than nothing. And for a $330 kit, a cheapo stainless steel pot is such a small ad. It It's like the Mora knife. Why is that not in the kit? Well, what is in the kit? That, that becomes the question, right? And it has some shit in it that I'm just like shaking my head at a little bit. Which is like, it had two mosquito nets, which are nice to have, but... They cost, I looked it up, six bucks a piece for these Coughlin's brand mosquito nets. Assuming that that's probably close to what they're paying for them. You, you chose that over some sort of cheap stainless steel pot? That's pretty stupid. Now, again, Bush Plain, Alaska, they have a lot of mosquitoes. A mosquito net would be nice. I would leave those in the kit, but at the same time, if you're choosing stuff like that over something like a canteen or a steel pot, it's just insanity. And a knife, and like the, the list grows. There's a Coughlin survival candle in there too, which again would be nice to have, but pretty unnecessary. Um, You've already made it clear we're not boiling water. And, like, if you did want to boil water, you could do it over a campfire. So the candle is just light. Well, the campfire provides light, too. Like, I do not understand throwing a, a candle that's the size of a fucking... I don't know, it was like six inches in diameter by, like, two inches. It's a lot of weight and bulk in that pack. And probably cost ten or twelve bucks or something like that, too. Why? You could throw a bag of like beeswax tea candles or something in the bag and be just as good in my opinion. Or just not have anything like that at all and have better quality electronic lights and have all the fire starters that you already do. Because that's the other thing is the electronic light that they threw in the kit is one of those, uh, I forget what they're called, but it's a little tiny thing that clicks onto a 9 volt battery and has a switch on the side of it. Is that better than nothing? Is that something I'd like to have in like a mini kit or something like that? Sure. This is a duffel bag of survival gear. You're telling me that there's no option for a flashlight that is a real, you know, probably aluminum housing or plastic housing flashlight with AAA batteries or AA batteries. And enough batteries to make that worth having in the pack. You know, in my small survival kit, I have a double-A mag light with the batteries that are in it and eight additional batteries. And that's overkill on that size of kit, and I know that, but I like having a better light. But in something like that duffel bag of gear, that's the kind of light that I would expect to be in that bag. And if it makes the kit more expensive, like, again, there's places to source flashlights that are cheaper than Maglite, first off. Are they as reliable? Probably not. But you know that little thing clipped to the battery, I wouldn't say is very reliable either. I've used a few of those in the past. They do work. There's nothing really wrong with them, except for the fact that it's about the worst flashlight you could put in a survival kit, in my mind. And on top of that, you have this huge duffel bag. There's no size restriction. I don't understand it. Like, it's a cost-cutting measure, obviously. Um, Shelter-wise, there's one space blanket in the whole kit. I'm sorry, there's two. There's two. There's a Survive Outdoors longer blanket and one of their gold Best Glide blankets. And in a kit this size, 
I would expect you to have one of those. Uh, they make a space blanket that is like a laminated mylar and plastic with some uh, cotton fibers in between them that has grommets on the edges. It's a heavy duty survival tarp blanket kind of a thing. I would expect you to have one of those in that kit and something that is like a real blanket like a poncho liner or something like that or at least that heavy duty emergency blanket and a couple of like the SOL style blankets that's really weird to me again you have the room you're charging out the ass for this kit in my mind why isn't that in there well I think that's not in there because those are like $20 and the SOL blanket that they're throwing in there is already probably like 12 bucks. Their own little Mylar blanket's a couple dollars. And this whole kit is just nickel and dimed to death like that. The, uh, the thing that really baffled my mind is that there are two can openers in this kit. One on the Victorinox knife, which I will forgive because it's a screwdriver also. And a can opener can be useful whether it's finding cans in the woods and making things out of them or hey I added canned food to this kit or something like that the second can opener is a P51 style can opener which at first I was kind of like well those are like a dollar who gives a fuck I looked it up they're like three bucks first off and there's enough other shit missing from this kit that you couldn't afford to waste $3 on a second can opener in a kit that contains no canned food or cans of any sort. Why is that even in the kit? Because it's cheap and small and we have them and we can throw it in the kit and it makes people feel better, I guess. it's That really makes no sense to me. It's not much money, but at the same time, not looking out for shit like that is how we can't afford a good flashlight in the kit because I guarantee you the cost of the little flashlight that they did include plus that three bucks from the can opener you could have had a much better flashlight the same thing goes for the lock sack bags instead of just plain old ziplock bags like they use on their other kits are they going to keep stuff more waterproof yeah but like they have one on a sewing kit they have all of their fire stuff in one which You'd be like, well, that makes sense. It makes sense in that you would have something to put tinder in to keep it dry. But the stuff that they're putting in the Aloxac bag is all waterproof fire starting stuff. They're waterproof matches and waterproof containers and a ferro rod and a thing of like fire gel or something like that. Like none of that shit needs to stay dry. And just a regular plain old Ziploc bag will do to keep it together. A lock sack bags aren't cheap, especially for the half a dozen of them that are in that kit. There's probably a stainless steel bush pots worth of lock sack bags that are not needed in that kit. And there's already a water bag, so it's not like you're going, oh, well, we don't have a water bag, so we're going to put all of this cool stuff inside in a lock sack bag so they have it as a water bag. And, like, it could be a backup. I'll give you that. It's just it's an odd choice. There's a bunch of odd choices. You know, the other knives, <laughs> knives that are in the kit are the little safety razor blade folding knife things that have a little, like, uh, plastic-type handle on them that are either orange or black. They sell those on their website. They're, like, a couple of bucks. In a mini kit that has no other knife, that really makes sense. In a gigantic kit... Having one of those as some sort of surgical blade or something, okay. You already have uh, the Victorinox for all other cutting tasks. I would put some like scalpel blades in the medical kit because that's really what you need there. They're sterile, they're super sharp, they're, you know, they're good to have. Those little razor knife things are just. Well, that's $4 on the kit that we could have used on something else, you know? And almost the entire kit is this way. They have it in a nice bag. I'll give them that. It's a nice heavy-duty Cordura nylon zip bag with a shoulder strap and handles. 
But at the same time, is that the best thing to have a survival kit in? Like, why isn't that a backpack? Well, it's going in the back of a bush plane or something. Okay, well, that, that makes sense, I guess. It, it's not really one way or the other is the right call, but if I was thrown into a survival situation, I would much rather have a backpack than a shoulder bag. But maybe the bag isn't as big and heavy as I think it looks. Because it looks like it's about 20 pounds of crap. Now, in a shoulder bag versus a backpack, that's is not ideal. And if you wanted to have the same exact style bag, and instead of having shoulders, a shoulder strap, have a pair of backpack straps on it, I'd be totally sold and on board. What else? Uh, I'm trying to remember what all was in the kit that just made me shake my head. There was a good amount of first aid supplies. And that's cool, but there was no tourniquet. Again, weird. Like, of all of that medical shit to have in there at all, the first thing on the list should be a tourniquet. But again, a tourniquet is expensive, and they sell tourniquets. So, it's almost like they intend for you to buy this $330 kit and then order another $200 worth of items off of their website to complete it out. And some of those items they don't even sell, like the stainless steel pot. I hate to just keep harping on that, but, like, if you set every, like, bushcrafter, camper, survivalist, uh, anyone that does anything like that in the outdoors, if you sat them down and said, name five things that you're going to always have in your pack for an emergency, some sort of metal vessel to boil water in is pretty high on that list. <laughs> it's pretty high on that list to have nothing even remotely like that represented in a $330 kit. And item number two that they would probably say is a fixed blade knife of some sort, and it's pretty odd to have a $330 kit with no more a knife in it. I'm not expecting them to go buy, you know, a hundred dollar plus survival belt knife from somebody like Tops or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there should be a Mora knife in that bag, period. It's the it's what's that it is what that is knife is called to do. You know, it is the cheapo survival knife. In addition to all of that shit. They have a snake bite kit in there, which I don't, I should have looked the price on that up. I don't know what that thing costs, but it is a suction device to suck out the poison. My advice to you in a survival scenario is don't get bit by a snake. I know that's, you know, well, duh advice, but without anti-venom, if you get bit by a rattlesnake, you're probably pretty fucked. It doesn't matter how much you suck on those wounds. Like, will sucking some of the venom out help you? It, yes, definitely. If you can manage to do that, and that's the big if. And this is where the whole, like, Boy Scout thing of cutting across the wound and sucking out and spitting out the stuff, that really doesn't help. That doesn't do anything for you. This thing is a suction pump powered thing that presses down onto the wound and sucks. That's going to do better. But again, there's no tourniquet in the bag. You bought a snake bite kit instead of a tourniquet? Weird. Like, where are your priorities? Because, like, my priorities are. Uh, way different, I guess. Like, I would be way more worried about getting some horrendous cut that cut an artery or some shit and, like, bleeding to death in 15 minutes than I would about fucking around with a rattlesnake until it bit me. And some of that comes from... I've been in the outdoors a lot in the Southwest, and there's a lot of venomous snakes around here. Uh, 
whether you're talking in Oklahoma, Texas, or Arizona, or New Mexico, you know, here in Oklahoma, we have multiple species of rattlesnakes. We have water moccasins. I, I just generally try to avoid snakes in a survival scenario or something like that. The only time I'd fuck with a snake was when I had purposefully made something to deal with a snake in order to kill it for food. And I don't even know if I would do it then. You know, rattlesnakes are tricky fucks, and if you're not used to handling them or whatever, you could very easily get bitten. So they're probably just best avoided, but they are an easy meal if you have a, a snake handling pole is like a uh, metal rod with a kind of hook sort of thing on it. You can make something like that out of wood, hold the snake's head to the ground and go up with your mora knife and cut it the fuck off. And that would be the temptation in a survival scenario is that's, that's a free meal there, basically. It thinks it's badass and it's untouchable and it's pretty easily killed if you know what you're doing but you're taking a risk it can put a hurt on you but my question is if you were fucking with snakes like that and did get bit and used your anti-snake bite kit would you still die or not well the snake injected enough venom into you to kill you probably five times so no matter how much you're sucking out, without anti-venom and a doctor, you are probably going to lose whatever was bitten and or die or some combination thereof. Suction or no suction. It's a, it's a useless item. Now, if I was building a backcountry kit of medical equipment or something like that, I sure, I might have that in there. Even then, the medical kit that I have right now for such things does not have a snake bite kit in it. At least not like that one. It has fucking tourniquets and uh, gauze and that sort of shit and stuff that you would use on a snake bite. But And there's some debate on whether or not you should use tourniquets on a snake bite or not. I'm not going to get into that debate here, but... once you understand that sucking poison out of the wound is not going to save the person's life, you're still going to have to go to a hospital and get treated with anti-venom and other shit. Like, it is a false sense of security. It's like a security blanket. You know, you can throw a security blanket in that bag too and mark it as an anti-bear blanket. Does that mean that you're safe against bears? Fuck no, it doesn't. Uh, that's another thing is there's no bear spray in this bag. There's no, you know, I wouldn't expect them to put a gun in the bag or something like that, but something for, for bears, I'd be a lot more worried about bears in Alaska than I would be about snakes. And it's kind of a Alaskan bush plane kind of survival kit. That's what the the bag's made for. And a small can of bear mace doesn't cost that much money. I have to look that up. Like, they're probably more expensive than the snake bite kit, but at least that would make sense. What else was in there? Oh, they had, uh, in their fire kit, they had two full bottles of lifeboat matches in addition to multiple other ways to light fire. I don't remember what all of those were, but there was a ferro rod in there with tinder. And I'm sitting here kind of like, why would you need two full bottles of lifeboat matches? Those are not a inexpensive item. You know, they're probably 10, 20 bucks somewhere in there. Seems an odd item to double up on. Now, they're not going to throw a butane lighter in that kit because they can't ship it. So, that's probably why they do that. But at the same time, weird. Yeah, this same company sells spark lights. 
which is what I have in my small survival kit. And in a giant survival kit, I would, a spark light with a bunch of extra tinder tabs is way better than lifeboat matches. I don't particularly care for matches in the first place. And the lifeboat ones are good in that they're nice and waterproof and they have that long match head on them and will burn. But at the same time, they burn up that match head super, super quick. And then you're down to this little nub of wood that may or may not be on fire. It's not the greatest fire starting method. And to double up on that seems just extra weird to me. It's like, it's like the can openers, you know? Why do we have two can openers and no cans? Because this is a survival kit. A survival kit needs can openers. Why are there matches in the kit? Well, it's a survival kit. Survival kits have lifeboat matches. Why do we put two of them? Because it's a big survival kit. So we're going to put extra matches. <laughs> like, okay. It's not the stupidest thing in the world, but it is kind of weird. I would much rather have spent that money if I were them on a different fire starting device of some sort. You know, pony up and buy buy the Bic lighter and pay for the shipping or whatever you have to do to sell that thing. Like, that's what should be in that kit instead of the second bottle of matches. Some sort of survival lighter of, you know, various sorts. Whether it's a Bic lighter or something better... You know, for the price of the lifeboat matches, you could buy 10 Bic lighters and stick them in that pack. Sorry, I lost my page here that I was looking at. Trying to remember what else was in this fucking kit now. Oh, signaling wise, they have a signal mirror and a whistle, which is basically the same thing that they have in their like smaller kits. And I'm not saying anything bad about those items. I like both those items. I have both those items in my small kit. But this is a duffel bag of survival shit to go into a plane. There's an obvious choice of thing to put in that bag. It's a flare gun, you know, uh, and or hand flares or, and this is, hey, we don't want to ship that shit again, but they sell that shit. So if you want to add it, it's on you, I guess, but for $330, I guess it, it it's, a flare gun is too expensive to add, kind of like a real multi-tool, but at the same time, is this a one-stop kit or not? Because it's, it's just, it's really not. It's a, it's a base from which to build upon. And that's kind of how you should look at a survival kit in general. But I think it sucks to spend $330 on a base on which to build upon. And you could figure out something better than a signal mirror and a whistle. The one thing they did include other than that, I forgot about is a thing of Orion die marker for a lifeboat. I guess that would be handy. I don't know. I've never used that shit before. Uh, the military uses it. It, it looks pretty good. It, you know, doesn't have the shipping restrictions, which is 100% why it's in the kit. But again, that's a pretty expensive item compared to some things and no flares, no flare gun weird it had a very small fishing kit it had a smaller fishing kit than the one in my small kit and it had some snare wire in it times two because they put snare wire in the sewing kit and in the hunting trapping kit but both of them are a coil about like this that are about yay thick and just judging from looking at that it's probably enough to make a half a dozen or so snares between those two bundles 
Maybe it's more wire than it looks like, but that's what it looks like to me. And there should be a whole spool of stainless steel snare wire in that bag. It's not that expensive. You're talking about a thing that's less than five dollars. The wire they chose is brass, which you can also use for snares, but at the same time, snares are a thing where in order to be successful with them, you have to set a bunch of them. This is a $330 kit. We can't spend a little bit more money on the snare wire. We can't spend a little bit more money on the fishing kit. You know, they sell a big ass fishing kit and a gill net for the $330 kit, I would expect those items to kind of be in that kit. There's, you know, no survival rifle, no survival bow or whatever. And like, that's kind of expected. Those are high dollar items that you should have to add yourself, but you could pretty easily have a slingshot and a pack of shot in that bag. That seems like a miss. Can you hunt everything with that now? But you could definitely shoot a rabbit or something with it. And I have a couple of those wrist rocket slingshots from Daisy, I think it is. And they were like five bucks a piece. It's a $330 kit. You know, I'm willing to give you a pass on not having a gun. I'm willing to give you a pass even on not having a bow and arrow. But... A $330 kit, which includes a hunting and trapping sub kit, should 100% have a slingshot. It's cheap, it's small, it's useful. Like, the whole kit is like that, in case you're not getting that. If I forgot anything, I'll guess, uh, I guess we'll just move on with life, but. Basically, you're buying a kit container and some semi-useful items that fill it for $330. And you can go to Best Glide and buy that same bag for like 20 bucks. Then go decide for yourself what you really need or don't need in your kit. And that's if you're in love with the bag. If you're not in love with the bag, you could go buy a backpack and do the same thing. And this is just to further illustrate the point that off-the-shelf survival kits kind of fucking suck. Like, I would consider Best Glide one of the better companies at this, especially at their smaller kits. You know, they make an Altoids 10-size kit. I already made a video talking about why I don't like those. But they make a bunch of medium-sized kits with this kind of mess, kin sorry, mess tin style container that I do really like. They have some weird choices in there too, but like some of that is to reach a price point and some of that is, you know, trying to add more value for what you're paying. But to me, this $330 kit is just a complete and total miss. It's missing so many of the first five or six items I would pick that why are you even buying this? Why would anyone buy this? It's a bag meant to sell to people who think, oh, well, I have a bush plane or I have a car in Alaska or whatever the scenario is that you want a kid of this size for. And they don't really know that much about what they're buying. And they go to these people who are supposed to be the experts and they buy the biggest kit they have, $330. Well, that ought to be good, right? As it turns out, not so much. Not unless you really, really add some stuff to this kit. They do have uh, some emergency water rations, which are cool. I think there's like six of them, which isn't much water, but you know how much water are you realistically going to add to a survival kit? Unless you're going to Arizona or something like that, where then fuck having water in the survival kit. I would have several five gallon jugs of water just dedicated to survival purposes in whatever vehicle it was. So, I'd give them a pass on that. And then for food, they have lifeboat rations, which 
have their ups and downs, but the good thing is they take a long time to go bad, and even after they're expired, they're still pretty edible for a long time after that. They're sealed up really well. I'm not going to judge them too harshly on that, but you have two can openers and no canned food and no big sticker on the front of the package that says, hey, dickhead, you need to add some cans of food to this kit. And there's a bunch of extra room in the kit, so I guess it is implied that you would fill out the rest of the bag. But if that's what they're doing, then there should be a big, big label on the top of the bag when you get it that says, before using this kit, you should add the following items. And have things like a Mora knife and a flare gun and canned food and a metal container or whatever it is else that's missing from that kit on the list. But when you do that, it makes people not want to buy the $330 survival bag. Because what are you really buying? Well, you're buying some Band-Aids and a sewing kit and some snare wire and a small fishing kit that you could literally put together yourself for less than five bucks. You know, the fishing kit they had had like one jig in it, a handful of hooks, and a little piece of wood that looks like a cut down uh, tongue depressor with some uh, line wrapped around it. And then they had a uh, another fishing thing in there that was a uh, self-setting hook so that you could leave a a line tied to a tree or something like that and it's fishing for you. That's cool. But again, it's kind of like the snare wire. There's one of those. If I was going to include shit like that in the kit at all, I'd put probably two or three of them at least just for there to be a success rate. You know, one line out in the water, you might catch a fish. A half a dozen lines out in the water like that, you're probably definitely going to catch a fish. And the bait they had for that thing was some sort of like dehydrated mealworm or something like that. Like that is really weird to me. I don't know. This video has been really long and kind of rambly, but it just emphasizes the point that an off the shelf survival kit fucking sucks. Again, Best Glide is one of the best names in this industry, in my mind. Uh, they're one of the places I go to to buy items. And their gigantic wilderness survival kit for $330, I would give a C- minus to, at best. Like, does it have some food and water? Yeah. Does it have water treatment methods and things to do that with? Yeah. What does it have beyond that that's actually useful to you in a variety of scenarios? You know, there's a little bit of fishing and trapping shit. That's cool. There's a sewing kit that is, like, literally, you know, this fucking big in there. I'm not saying don't have a sewing kit, but, like, they have a hell of a sewing kit. Like, you're going out there to make arts and crafts or some shit. <laughs> and then in this giant sewing kit, there's four pins and three sewing needles and if you're going to have a sewing kit that big why wouldn't you have a 12 pack of needles or whatever it is I don't understand that at all the odds of you losing a needle in the woods I think are pretty good if it's a mini kit or something I get that and this is where they make mini kits and smaller kits and all of these items that they're putting in there are kind of built towards those kits and they're just assembling a whole bunch of them in hopes to make more money. If I had to guess, I would say that this kit probably cost them somewhere in the neighborhood of $120. Maybe a little bit more than that because of some of the items in the, the kit that I've forgotten about or whatever, or not considering the price of, like the head nets and the SOL survival blanket. But the thing you got to remember about a company like this is they're going to go to those companies and be like, we want to use your item in our survival kits and we're going to order a million of them. What price can we get? And they've done that with everything in this kit. And is it worth paying money to have someone else assemble a kit? Yes, I think it is. 
is it worth paying $200 to have someone assemble a kit that is $120 worth of shit in a $20 bag that doesn't cover all of the bases you would really need? You know, it's a 72-hour emergency sort of thing for a plane crash that, in my opinion, to have that bag in a bush plane in Alaska is a good idea, but it's a much better idea to have that same bag with all that same stuff in it with a real flashlight, a fixed blade knife of some sort, a real canteen of some sort, and a real steel pot of some sort. And a wood saw. Like, there's all this fire making material, and the way that you're going to be gathering and processing firewood is a Swiss Army recruit and a wire saw. Both of which are items that would fit in an Altoids tin. And the container that you have chosen to package this in is a giant duffel bag. That makes zero sense. Well, I hope someone has enjoyed this. Uh, I just, I watched that video and couldn't kind of believe what I was watching, really. Like, it's been a while since I've watched anything on what was in a survival kit from somebody like that. And I forgot how bad they can be. Because, <laughs> like, that isn't just kind of bad. That's almost full-on failing. Like, a C-minus... I'd even almost give it a D plus, really. It's it's right on that verge of almost being an F. If it didn't have fire pretty much covered and water treatment for a couple of weeks pretty much covered, I would give it an F. But it has those two things. And it has a bunch of other useful stuff in it. Just some of it is like, why in the fuck are you picking that shit over a Mora knife and a steel pot? <laughs> like... Some just really common choices that would be among people's like short list of things to have in a survival kit like that are just completely missing. And, you know, do you need those things in a survival scenario? I'm going to say not necessarily, but I would feel much better having those in the kit than having the Swiss Army recruit a water bag and a wire saw. It's like they took the mentality of the Altoids 10 kit and made a duffel bag out of it. So now it, instead of being an Altoids 10 of semi-useless shit, it's now a duffel bag of semi-useless shit. Well, congratulations, you know? You managed to fuck up even more spectacularly than I thought possible. I, I'm gonna change my grade on this kit to a D plus. It's it's really that bad. It's a shockingly bad kit for $330. And again, this isn't the worst kit out there. There are much worse kits than Best Glide. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.